Hey everybody, Aaron Blades here and welcome to Season 2, Episode 1 of Aaron's Art Tips. Okay, so today I want to talk to you about, um, uh, in animation, a lot of times when animators are working with expressions on their characters and they're getting some really extreme squashes and stretches, a lot of times younger animators, they tend to forget anatomy. They tend to forget that inner structure, the skull, the bones, and that sort of thing, and their animation kind of, it turns to mush. And so today I want to take you through kind of a little lesson and don't forget and, and how to not forget your anatomy okay but before we do I just want to give a shout out to Wacom and it's been a little while since uh, I've been doing any digital work and so today I want to you know uh, like I said do some uh, animation on my Cintiq I work on an HD 24 uh, Cintiq and it's fantastic I absolutely love it and uh, also, if you want to see more of my work, check out my new website. It's all It's got a new facelift. It's looking really great. Thanks to my new partners, Nick Birch and Clint Weldon. Um, go to creatureartteacher.com, and there you're going you're gonna to find all kinds of cool t t uh, tutorials, uh, lessons on drawing and painting, uh, uh, digitally in Photoshop. There'll be some animation lessons, all kinds of cool stuff, so go check it out. So anyway, let's, um, let's get to the animation. So... Um, You'll see here, I work in TV Paint, which is a very cool uh, software for animation. I work on my Cintiq, and I may, you know, it's it, me being an older guy that's used to, you know, all of the tr uh, traditional animation, hand-drawn kind of stuff. Um, TV Paint is very friendly in the sense that um, it kind of feels traditional. You get very organic-looking drawings, and yet it's digital. I can, but I can flip back and forth between drawings, and it's very cool. So um, today, here's a drawing that I started with just to prepare, and I, I just thought I'd do an animal drawing, uh, some anima, animal animation today. And so this first drawing is just kind of this neutral pose of this cat character. And what I want to do is I want to show you a, a couple of extremes. I'm going to do a big squash and then a big, you know, open mouth. And um, as we work through that, I'm going to talk about anatomy and and uh, you know the bone structure and that sort of thing so the first thing to do is let's go ahead and get a new drawing and you can see the you know kind of the ghosting of the of the first image in there and the first thing I want to do is this squash so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull his head back a little bit I'm gonna drop it down because I want his head to go back slightly and we're just gonna squash I'm gonna squash that circle just slightly his head okay I'm gonna bring those ears down, and you'll see I'm I'm thinking about volume. Okay, I'm gonna go through this fairly quickly. Now watch, I'm gonna get into here. I'm gonna scrunch those eyes. I'm really thinking about getting the the brow to furrow, getting some of those wrinkles in there. Now watch, you see these cheekbones from the from the from the first drawing. I want to keep those basically the same. That's bone. That's that's going to stay fairly rigid. I can jump back and forth and you can start to see some movement here. See that? So I want to keep that fairly rigid. And it's I'm going to pick up like some wrinkles here in the in the face. Look at that. And the nose is going to scrunch up a little bit. I'm going to bring that nose down here. I'm going to push that V of the nose a little bit even though it might not quite go that much in nature I'm pulling that down and I want to look uh, uh, uh. close these eyes close the eye here and we get squinting in here squinting here in this flesh. I'm thinking about where all that flesh might be. I really want to push these brows down. And I'm constantly 
jumping back and forth between my two drawings. See how they're doing. Okay. Come in, in here. Now, what I want to do here is this is where it gets really. I want to thinking about this jaws really tightening up. Look what I'm doing here. Oh, you see that kind of scrunching? It's going to scrunch up here, scrunch up here. I'm going to scrunch that mouth. And here, I'm going to flatten that chin a little bit. Now, here's where I cheat a little bit because even though that chin should be rigid, I want to I want to go with the opposite of you know the the basic shape of the muzzle is like this. We got the nose, and it comes down here, and we got this shape to the mouth. Well, I want to kind of get this basic shape in the squash, and so I'm I'm you know trying to get between those two, uh, between those two uh, uh, shapes basically. And so let me go ahead and jump over here. I'm going to erase that. We'll just get that erased out of there so we don't see a flicker. All right, so you can see. And then here, you know, if you think about the jaw underneath, that jaw comes in like so, right? Comes in like that. Well, I'm really thinking about how that's going to squash and it's really going to compress that muscle is going to compress. These cats have these big muscles that connect all the way up into the skull. And so you'll see flexing all the way up into the skull. Okay. I'm going to get that hair in here and the ears. So what I like to do is I'm going to squash out that hair on the side like it's being flung out there a little bit from this squash. There we go. And you'll see I'm really not noodling. I'm, I'm being pretty loose. Once again, let's jump back and forth. See that? Getting a little bit of movement there. And actually what I want to do here is I'm going to move him down just slightly because I want to get even more movement because I want to see him pop right up. There we go. Now let's jump. There we go. Look at that. So we're getting much better squash, a little bit more movement here. There we go. I'm going to get a little flex to that neck. Like he's scrunching up his shoulders. He's pushing in his shoulders. Ooh, ooh, you feel that? See that? I'm going to get a little bit more of the hair underneath here. Maybe even a little compression. Some scrunching up the muscles up in, up in there. I want to pull this down even more. There we go. Just get right in there. All right. Now you can go even stronger. You know, if you have a character that's really broad, very cartoony, you can go even stronger with that. Here I'm going to get some of this, some of that flesh bunched up. There we go. So we've got a nice squash happening there. And I'm really thinking about that skull underneath staying consistent. You know, we've got it here, here. You see that? And it stays basically the same, but we can squash all the fleshy parts. Okay? So let's go to the next drawing. So I want to do something where he goes really, really big and uh, uh, big open expression. So. I'm going to, let's see here if this works. That's a little confusing. I'm going to take that off. You have the ability in TV Paint to show um, any number of drawings going back as far as 10 drawings so that you can see the movement uh, of the animation. But with this one, I'm just going to go straight ahead with just seeing one drawing behind. So I'm going to have him going back. And now I want to go really big. And watch, watch what I do with this shape of his head. I'm basically keeping the same volume, but I'm stretching it out a bit. And you'll see he's jumping back. And I'm going to go way up here with that nose. Pull it down like so. Because watch what I do. 
I'll do this once again keeping very loose remember how squashed this muzzle is here well, I'm gonna really pull it down Pull that up. We're getting a slight, slightly different angle on the face. So I'm going to pull the eye line is, I mean, his head is tilting up just slightly. So I'm going to see a little bit of teeth here. Maybe in here, like so. They tend to have these really black lips on the side there. A couple of teeth. Look how, look how loose I'm being. You can always go back, tie things down later. What's the most important? I'm going to have that some of this hair just drag. Now, what's important here is making sure that we keep. Remember that there's a jaw. I'm going to come in here and shade this in a little bit so we can see the open mouth. We'll just color this right in real quickly. Okay. There, that's better. You can see it a little better now. Given those black lips that they have. But I want I want to feel like it's pulling, like everything's pulling down. Because this jaw, we want to remember that jaw. That there's, you know. When the, if you're looking at the cat from the side, here's a cat here. He's got his, like that. And you got this jaw that comes in like that. Well, when he opens his mouth, you know, you got to think about that anatomy and what's happening. And that jaw has to work like a hinge. You got to get that to work, okay? And a lot of times people kind of just treat it as kind of a trap door that just drops down. Well, no, it doesn't. It, it's on a hinge and it opens like a hinge, like a door. And, uh, and that's how you keep, you know, think about where that jaw connects to the side of the head. And that's, that should be your pivot point for your, for your muscle and your, and the jaw mass and, and the whole mouth and everything else. Okay. So I'm going to come back here. So now um, I want to get these brows like way up, way up in the air. I'm going to really push that. Wow. Wow. And what I want to do, like he's, it's like a big take, like he's getting surprised. But once again, remember those, those cheekbones? I'm basically going to keep them the same width. Okay, the same width as what we had, but I'm stretching all of this flesh. All of this flesh that hangs off the bone there, that's getting stretched down. Okay. So now I'm getting into the eyes and I want them big. I want them big and I want them surprised. So I'm going to come in here. There we go, nice and big. Maybe even shrink that pupil down a little bit to even give it a little bit more emphasis on the surprise. Like so. Get a little black in there. And we'll pull the bottoms of these eyes down. Way down. Like so. See that? Oh. Oh. Boom, boom, boom. But the see the basic width here of the of the cheeks are staying the same. But you can see that these cheeks or the, the muzzle here is getting pulled, yanked down, getting all this pulled back. And I'm gonna pull the ears back and up. So this one's actually gonna reverse. And this one's gonna reverse. Pull some of that hair out. And then because he's going, 
He's jumping back. I want some of that hair on the side of the face to drag. It's going to drag. See there? Because he's flying backwards. And this hair here is going to drag and stretch downward. See that? Ugh. And then I want to bring that shoulder down. He's probably he's going to turn into camera a little bit more because of that. He wants to face whatever it is that's coming after him. So we get that in there. Like so. You can see that pulling. Boom, boom, boom. So if I do this. can see our volumes are basically staying the same but we're getting them stretched and squashed and we're remembering that anatomy think about that skull underneath your character whether it's human animal whatever it may be think about that skull think about its volume think about its rigid rigidity and then play off the fleshy parts you know the cheek here is going to stay fairly rigid in its width and, the, and that sort of thing, but you can get flesh that stretches like we have going on right there on the sides of the face. And you have squ you know squashy, stretchy skin in the in the faces and the muzzle and the brow, those areas, and those are the places you can play with. You know the top of your head is going to be fairly rigid. You know your ears you can do a lot with. Um, the hair, all that, all those things, those are things to play with. So let me get in here and really get some of that going. So when we boom, boom, you can see that nice stretch. Oh, and that, ex that surprise expression. Let me get this here. We go with one, two, three. And you can see as I progress, I become much looser. You can always go back. You can always uh, uh, refine your drawings. I love to stay loose and that sort of thing. So anyway, that's my quick lesson today. Think about the, the anatomy under the skin of your character. Don't forget the anatomy. Don't forget the bones. Because if you do, if you start squashing areas that should be bone, if you start playing with those volumes too much, and you're trying to do a believable character that's structurally sound, you're going to end up with something that looks like a water balloon. It doesn't feel like it has a skeleton. So when you can think about those, those, the skeleton underneath the skin of your character, even if it's somewhat cartoony, you're going to anchor that character in reality a little bit more. It's going to feel a little bit more believable, but you can still have fun with it. It's not, it does, it's not something that holds you back. You can still get lots of stretch and squash and, and uh, expression, but with that skeleton underneath, you're going to end up with something that's much more believ believable and more solid. Okay, so have a great week. Um, I'll talk to you again soon, and I hope you learned something today. Thanks a lot. Bye.